Next question is from Fat Husband. <laughs> <laughs> Great handle. I like this guy. He's a good guy. What's one thing from the 90s era, era fitness that you wish was still around today, and why is it Ultimate Orange? <laughs> Ultimate Orange. <laughs> Ultimate Orange. Well, man. for people who don't know, Ultimate Orange is the first real pre-workout uh, supplement. They really were the first supplement that kind of introduced something into that class or market. And what Ultimate Orange was, was caffeine, ephedra, and aspirin. It was the old ECA it's so crazy. stack. Um, now, I... Can you I, still get a hold of that somewhere? I like the, You can get ephedra, but you have to get it Yeah, I mean, a, Ultimate Orange itself. Can not, you still Not get the it? real one. No. You, I, wonder, I wonder if we could call Rich up and get like a little hookup. You know like a, yeah. yeah, a little underground <laughs> Ultimate still got Orange. It in I mean, come somewhere. on. He's got to have yeah. like fucking jugs of it somewhere yeah. laying around. Well, so here's the deal. Like ephedra is illegal now to be sold unless it's sold as a bronchodilator. So you can still get ephedra, but you get it combined with uh, guaifenesin or something like that. It's a compound for for your lungs because it is a bronchodilator. So you can still get it. I used to love this stuff back in the day. I think I abused it, to be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, this was back, you know, I would take uh, Rip Fuel and Rip Force. Speed and stacks. And all speed that. stacks. And ephedra, caffeine, and aspirin, they make you feel like you're on drugs. Uh, you know, you're, you are, you are, you're, <laughs> that's why it's, Dude, it's weird how it feels that you're way. You're fast. Yeah. You're talking fast. So what are you bringing fast. back? What are you bringing back from the nineties? Oh, hear. you know what? I'll, okay. So let's start, let's start with I the know exercise. What I, stuff. I know I want to bring back. Go right, well, you first. Then. Yeah. I, I want to bring know. back uh, MC hammer pants. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> love can't those, just, dude. I love those <laughs> pants. To dude. work out in you? Mean? All around. I want to wear them too. I had some of those. It's like Zubaz, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it had like these uh, uh, fish bones on it. I they, remember it vividly. I had a pair that like uh, they velcroed in. You know what I'm saying? Like you, uh. you, you just you opened them up like this to get in and out of them. Yeah, and then when <laughs> you when you close them, you just velcroed it in. Wow. Yeah, yeah, dude. It looked like you took a crap. <laughs> hell, hell legit. Yeah, super easy to get in and out. Too legit to quit. Yeah, bring back the MC Hammer pants. I um, sweet. I, you know, okay, so I'll talk exercises. There. So this is funny. I've, I've been doing this for so long. I see exercises fall into. Favor and out of favor. You know what was really in favor in the 90s, at, at, at least for the bodybuilding community? Hmm. Behind the neck exercises. Oh, yeah. Behind the neck pull downs was a big deal, and behind the neck shoulder presses uh, was a big deal. And they fell out of favor. Um, and that's too bad uh, because I think that they have real value. Now, of course, you got to have good pull ups too. You got yeah, all yeah. that stuff. I mean, shit in the in the eighties and nineties, you know, you had Rocky doing you know behind the neck. Remember that that scene from Rocky Four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, I showed Jessica for the first time that uh, that whole that whole scene, the whole montage <laughs> where he's working out in the cabin. Dude, we were driving home and those sit ups, bus, bus, bus. and she plays Eye of the Tiger, right? And I'm like, oh, it's weird how this always gives me the chills when I listen to it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, have you heard the soundtrack to Rocky IV? The the you know the, the montage of his training. And so then we listen to that, and then I'm and she didn't like get it, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you need to watch the clip. Yeah. So I got home and I showed, she still didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I want to bring still back is everybody that thought they knew karate. Yeah. <laughs> everybody in the nineties thought they knew karate. Yeah. And like, ah, like, like you just because the Karate Kid, dude. Yeah. That's what it did. Yeah, because yeah. Cobra Kai and, and everybody else. Like now everybody's like, oh, dude, totally do jujitsu, bro. Yeah, I, jiu -jitsu. I have a I have a serious one for you for exercise. How about barefoot squatting? That was a big. Was that in the nineties though? Yeah, it was nineties. Well, I don't you, remember seeing anybody barefoot. In the was it eighties? That's like seventies, bro. That's like Arnold did that. Oh, then maybe eighties. Yeah, maybe mm. a little bit of eighties. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's something that hasn't been. I mean, it, it's barely. It's like popular, like with the the, the functional community, yeah. uh, but not the general population. I got one for you. Uh, mm. Atomics shoes to work out in. Remember, remember the, 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 the bodybuilder? Oh, dude, look them up, Doug. You'll Come recognize them right away. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't write they, They're like the white, like kind of high tops. All the bodybuilders wore them in the 90s. And I 100%, if you see them, you're going to remember. I felt like I, I saw a lot more singlets back then. In the gym. And they would lift weights in singlets. Right? Like yeah. with like, like AC Slater. Yeah, I am you know, not I want to be AC Slater. lifting weights in something that's that tight on yeah, my stuff. Yeah, right? You're just, ooh, yeah, you're then you're just gonna, pointing out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, no um, wants to see that. But the behind the neck exercises that I was talking about, they do require good shoulder stability, good mobility. You have to have a, oh, a certain level ugly. of functionality. Do you see them? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but if you have those things, um, those movements have some real value. I still to this day do behind the neck presses at least once a week. I love the way they make my yeah. shoulders yeah. you know, feel. Well, I think it's one of those things that like I remember I had to spend like, I don't know, maybe a year 
of working on that. I, I was doing just the bar for mm -hmm. a long time because I didn't have the mobility. So I think that I think it's uh you know we talk about like the the skill of squatting, right? Like just because you can't do it very well doesn't mean that you should just avoid it. You should work towards being able to do it. I feel the same way about behind the neck exercises. There's a lot of people. In fact, a majority of people listening right now can probably not perform a behind the neck shoulder not press. Not safely. Yeah, not safely. So that doesn't mean because you can't do that that you just say, oh, I can never do this. It's like, okay, that should be a good, that's a good goal. And we always talk about how do you stay like motivated to train and exercise? This is another example of that. Like it can get really boring always chasing building muscle, burning body fat, building muscle, burning body fat, looking a certain certain way all the time. Like this is how I like I would take clients on like, like, hey, our goal for the next two, three months is to work on you being able to perform this exercise. Mm -hmm. This is really good for shoulder health. You can't do it right now. So our main focus is going to be that. And then you start programming all these mobility drills and, and you and the way you test that is the behind the neck press. And the goal is to be able to do that. And then when you get to see yourself be able to do it and then actually progress with load, it's a really cool accomplishment. And what it does for the body is incredible. Absolutely. All right. Doug's having trouble uh, with the internet again, but I'm going to pull up. <laughs> I'm going to pull these shoes up for you, Adam. Constant battle. You need to see. What I, I know. I want to see if I've seen them before. Oh, 100%, dude. You, you'll remember these. These were. I kind of feel like I've seen. Do you remember the guy? At, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, and they would wear them with the big pants. Those are back in style. Uh, they never left. Okay, I guess. yeah, because look, some at, look up a company called uh, Rider Rider Shoes. R R Y D E R is a company that ma that's all they do is make those. Is to make those kind. Yeah, of yeah. Shoes. Look at look at uh, Rider weightlifting oh, shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they copy the. Did the, you pull them up? Yeah, I did. Yeah, exactly. No, bro, the Atomic shoes. That was what bodybuilders wore. In the 90s, 100%. And they would be different colors. Yeah, they're super popular in the uh, Instagram men's physique and bodybuilding world. Like that, they sponsor all the all of my peers. Yeah, I don't get that. Like like special weight, like shoes to work out or whatever. I don't, well, I mean, I don't, well, unless I mean, you're like a like an Olympic lifter. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you're doing something impressive. Just wear your chucks. Yeah. 